Now that we know a few things about how computer lights are designed to respond in a 3D scene, what they will and won't do, let's take a look at some of the different types of lights that you'll be working with. Probably the place we ought to be starting our discussion is asking why in the heck haven't we had to worry about lighting until now? I mean, when you think about it, we've done plenty of things that needed light, right? Working in our viewports, rendering out a few pics, all that, and not once has the subject of lighting even been an issue. Well, the reason for that is every time you open Max, you're given, free of charge, a couple of hidden lights that have helped to light your way. And those free light sources have worked just fine until now, holding us over and giving us a chance to see what we've created. If you really want to do things right, in order to be able to create that special mood or feel that only a well thought out lighting scheme can give you, seriously consider getting the habit of lighting a scene from scratch, starting with a clean slate and making the most out of the lights that 3ds Max offers. And going in to figuring out how to most effectively light a scene, be aware that it's not always the type of light that you choose that's going to make the determining factor as to how your scene turns out. No, more importantly, it's what you do with that light, how and where it's positioned, and what you specifically do to control things like its color and intensity. Believe me, if you want realism, there's a lot more to it than simply choosing the right type of light. What it really boils down to is how well you can manipulate and control whatever specific type of light you've chosen to use. Always remember that. Now, your lights can be found under the Lights tab in the Command Panel. There's a couple of different types, one called Photometric, the other Standard. Photometric lights are designed as an advanced light system that uses actual photometric values to more accurately define the way a CG light simulates real-world lighting. They're designed to take advantage of Max's exposure control settings giving you the added level of adjustability over the brightness and contrast level in a scene. That control, though, coming at the expense of a more detailed setup and a more thorough understanding of the way things work. Let's go ahead and create a photometric target light in our top view. Photometric lights can be configured using a specialized template for the type of light that you need. You have different light bulbs, different halogen type lights, there's recess lights and fluorescent lights, even settings for creating the illuminating effect that you'd get from a street light or even a sports stadium light. You also have control over the color a certain light emits. Again, being able to choose from fluorescent to halogen to the color given off by an incandescent light bulb. The lights that I think we ought to focus on for this fundamentals discussion are the standard lights. Let's start with the spotlight. There's two types, one being called a target spot, the other being referred to as a free spot. We'll talk more about the differences between those in just a moment. In our top view on the left hand side, I'll create a target spot. A spotlight shines kind of like a flashlight in that it illuminates only in the direction that it points. Now, let's also create a free spot so we can see how it differs from the target. We'll do that on the right hand side of the front view. The difference between the target and free versions of the spot is the target on the target light. That target serves as an additional handle on the light that can be both selected and moved to control the opposite end. I'm going to go ahead and take the top view full screen using the Alt-W keyboard combo. Selecting the target light on the left hand side, moving it from side to side, you'll notice that the light always looks in the direction of the target. Wanting to redirect the light as to the location it's shining, we can always select the target moving it. Notice that as we do, the light rotates as needed to follow its interest, the target. The free light works a little bit different. Without having that target on the other end, the light always points forward. If you're needing to turn the light from one side to the other, you'd rotate the light. Let's go ahead and delete our selected free spotlight. Next up, you've got the direct light. Let's make a targeted version of that on the right hand side of our view. The direct light is very similar to the spot in that it shines only in the direction that it's pointed. Having a target on the other end, you can manipulate either side of the light. 
What makes the direct light different than the spot is that its rays all travel parallel to each other, making it more similar to maybe the way the sun shines. With a spotlight, the light rays all angle outward from the point of origination. Let's go ahead and window select both lights and we'll hit delete. Another standard light type is the OmniLight. Let's go ahead and create one of those on the left hand side of our screen. Where in which the spot and direct lights only shine in the direction in which they point, the OmniLight, on the other hand, is designed to shine in all directions, making it like a mini sun hanging from a string. So the light from an Omni illuminates 360 degrees. There's also a specialized light source in the standard category called a skylight, which can be used in situations where you want to specifically simulate daylight lighting conditions. The skylight system is meant to be used with something in Max called the Light Tracer, which again serves as a more advanced lighting solution beyond the scope of a fundamentals title. And lastly, two more advanced lighting configurations, the Mental Ray Area Omni and the Mental Ray Area Spot. Lights that are specifically designed to be used with Max's high-end Mental Ray Rendering Engine, which we'll be briefly looking at in the chapter on rendering. So that's a general overview of the various types of lights in 3ds Max. Over the course of the next couple videos, we'll be looking in detail at the ones you'll most likely be using in your personal projects.